So like some glasses on or off. I always wear mine. I don't care what you do. Fair enough. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're day two of the Farm Progress Show. So, like I said in the first video, if you missed that one, go check it out. We're gonna pick up at the horse tent because that's where I was yesterday when the show closed. Oh, I know where dad's gonna be. You hear the hit miss? That means ice cream. So the guy from horse that does the, does the interviews, he's not there right now, so We'll uh, have to circle back to there this afternoon sometime. But one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't checked out the new Fent One cab. So I'm gonna head over here to the Agco booth and get someone to talk to us about the new Fent One cab and the big, uh, the nine series tractors. Okay, so I'm in a mock-up uh, Fent One cab. So they've got the ignition turned on. You can see all the monitors, what they do. Check this out. Oh yeah thing just uh, retracted down or went down pretty cool Daniel what all functionality do we have in here with the different screens like what's the theories here yeah so uh, we've got a digital dashboard on the front so that's gonna basically show you all your uh, vehicle functions uh, speed uh, engine rpm we can actually uh, toggle through like a hydraulics page universal terminal page okay. multiple pages and see that from kind of a heads-up display Okay. In addition to that, we've also got two 12-inch monitors where we can actually customize and show whatever information we want to from those 12-inch displays. Okay, so from the two monitors, we can we can put hydraulics on one, GPS on one, or I mean, exactly. Yeah, so they're basically so, linked together. Uh, they're they're completely independent of each other, okay. but we can actually uh, set them up uh, however we really see fit. So okay. uh, yeah, a lot of guys are running guidance on one page, one screen, and then a universal terminal on the other, or showing hydraulics on the other terminal. Yeah, uh, various different functions. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. I know, like on the 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 Accu terminal or Vario like, terminal, whatever, uh, side, yep, whichever, yep. whichever brand you're in. Exactly. Uh, yep. I mean, that was one thing that that monitor was kind of lacking, is constantly going back and forth. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, you're you're very familiar with that cab. This cab is kind of a complete flip on its head of that cab. So uh, in that cab, you actually had multiple places where you had to touch in the cab to manipulate the radio, some of the buttons up on the steering wheel, and you only had one display. Well, this cab actually has one place where you touch all the functions on the armrest, but up to three displays. So kind of a complete flip of, of, of that operating philosophy. Okay. So over here on the uh, on the joystick yep. here, uh, I mean, we have two in and goes here. Uh, I mean, is everything else customizable, or are these uh, uh, so, hydraulics? So, or? Yep. So you got two hydraulic uh, SCV controls. All the white buttons are actually going to be completely customizable to oh. whatever function. So that, that goes throughout the entire armrest. So all of those white buttons can be uh, completely customized and set. Uh, it's still the same same way with our previous fence. Um, whatever coded. SCV, yep, color code, whatever SCV you want to put to whatever fingertip or hydraulic control, you can do that. And yes, as you said, all the color coding is still intact. So all the orange is for powertrain, blue for hydraulics, I know teal look, for teaching. It seems like anytime anyone gets in one of our challengers or any fin, it yep. seems like those colors throw them off. But once you figure out that that color is you're exactly right, yep. coded, yep. You're, I mean, you're that, exactly right. Yep. I mean, I, I always kind of liken it to uh, you hop in the first time, you say, oh man, my, my seven year old dropped a box of crayons in here but there is actually a structure to it and yeah. it does, uh, does actually make sense and as soon as you get you know 15-20 minutes it, it makes complete sense exactly yeah. yeah so if my 71 year old dad can figure it out I mean, exactly yeah yep. yep. exactly so this is a 700 series cab so it is a little bit smaller than a thousand but the armrest controls and the monitors are all the same so yeah this is what you're eventually going to start seeing in the thousand and nine hundred series events so pretty cool I know like I said at first it does look intimidating but um, you know, once you figure out how fence work, uh, color coding, all that stuff, it's really very convenient and easy to use. Went over there and looked at it and talked about it for a long time and they never expected that. Okay guys, so I stopped over to steal one of Farmhand Mike's hats and then I got busy talking to, to the Welkers and I, I still don't have a hat and somehow, somehow Scott does have a hat. You know what the best part is, is I got, I got a signature from Farmhand Mike guys. These are, <laughs> these are collectible. I didn't. <laughs> those are collectible. I got I, mean, I was going to yeah. start my retirement fund with that. It's, I'll give you a two for 15 bucks. Okay. Hey, where's your brother? He, you know, the one with the big arms. Yeah, he's, oh, <laughs> oh we fired him. Yeah. He is like, he, we let him go. His work ethic was absolutely absurd. We could not accept this anymore. I understand. He doesn't clean the shop anymore. Well, I mean, I mean it, you were the good brother anyways. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> 
Yeah. But uh, that's one of the best parts about coming to these farm shows is you get a bump, uh, bump in the people you've seen at the last farm show. So like Scott and I, we live about 2,000 miles apart. We're neighbors, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. practically. Yeah. Maybe in Montana and Ohio, that's not how far our neighbors are apart, actually. <laughs> a little bit closer. You know. uh, the thing is, though, connections. Yeah. We, we yeah. appreciate the connections. Yep. It's, and, always, uh, it's always good to bump into guys. I oh, mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's well, good seeing it. you again, yeah. man. Good to see you. Yeah, most and probably grab a, slip over and grab one of your hats, too, I guess. Oh, eventually you'll get one of these hats. But you know, tomorrow morning, if he doesn't, you better oh, be there. Oh, I'm going to be here at 7 okay. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> get one of those yeah. He might have one available. Might yeah. I bet you if you just, you know, you know. I'm just going to find out where they keep them in the tent. Just, uh, we'll talk about that later. Well, no, no. So one thing, like I mentioned, Fent just, well, they, they're starting to label sprayers Fent. Not only that, they're also going up in the air higher. So right. uh, bumped into Dave Figgle. Dave and I actually went to college together, funny story. But, yep. uh. Anyways, Dave, what uh, what do we have going on here with this fin? I mean, I, I see that it goes up in the air taller. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the biggest thing for us, folks, is, is he's got the Fent brand, right? A lot yeah. of heritage there, a lot of legacy. Rogator brand was the same way. We kind of brought those together. Now we've got the Fent Rogator 900 series. So there's two things on this, Brian, that are that are really important. One, it's adjustable clearance, right? Yep. So you can raise and lower this machine at the touch of a button. It takes under 30 seconds to go up and less than 30 seconds to go down. Okay. So that's that's huge, right? Yeah. The other cool thing is you can put a liquid system on this. You can also put a dry system on it, like a, like a spreader yep. or an air max system or an air system. Right. Right. So there's not a lot of machines out there that have that sort of versatility and can run all season long. Okay. So maybe in the springtime you're running pre-plant, you can run that all year, go through high clearance mode, and then come in in the fall, maybe put floaters on it and put uh, you know some fall fertilizer in. What's the change over time when you dry box? Yeah, so the, the change over time for a combo machine is around two hours. Uh, okay. We simplified that a lot over the previous model. Okay. Uh, so that's a lot easier now. You don't have to swap the pumps. Uh, so we think that's gonna be a big hit with growers and, and retailers. Gotcha. Yeah, I know, uh, especially with fungicide, I mean, yep. I think more and more people are becoming believers of fungicide. And when you take out the cost of an airplane, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you can say. I mean, fungicide yeah. makes a lot more sense. It's a lot easier to pay for. So I think yeah. it'll be a. I think it'll be a good hit for you guys for sure. Yeah, yeah, we're we're really excited about it. The ROI is a big part of it, right? We, when we created this machine, let's have one machine that can do it all, right? Yeah. Run in the spring, the summer, the fall, and and put any system on it. So well, I, I know, think we've caught that. Here. Like sprayers are expensive, but when you look at what it costs a, oh, yeah. a co-op to spray for you, and they're not just spraying your field one time. Yep. If you got if you got three thousand acres, you might as well figure yeah. on spraying, you know, yep. nine thousand acres at least. Yeah, so. and there's customers in the south with cotton; they'll run over seven, eight, nine times right. a year yeah. for applications. So those acres add up for sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, one thing I was going to ask: Is there still a? Uh, I, mean, I see this is labeled Roger. Is there a yep. terragator still, or a three wheeler spreader, or is it just going to be the? Uh, like the, 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 uh, the Rogator. Yeah, so yeah, we don't have one here on the lot, but we still offer our Terragator line okay. and the three-wheel and the four-wheel configuration. Okay. This machine made in Jackson, Minnesota, just like every other Rogator and just like every other Terragator. So will the Terragator be green or yellow? Uh, ter Terragator is going to stay with the yellow. Okay. Yep. Okay. yep. Oh. That's the path. There you go. All right. I appreciate it, Dave. Thanks, Brian. The, one of the things we have at the farm is a JCB telehandler similar to that one. One of the things I really like about JCB is their skid steers. Because it's easy to get into. Got one boom, so the whole side opens up. I like that. Much more fat guy friendly. So this would have been much more ideal for what we're doing with our telehandler, but these were just a little bit more money we wanted to spend and we couldn't find one. But these would be awesome. Okay, everybody, I'm over at the John Deere booth and uh, I was talking to Nick Howerton about the, uh, the X9, so. Nick, what uh, what separates the X9 from like a more traditional uh, John Deere combine? Yeah, so the X9 is kind of the, the next evolution in our John Deere harvesting solutions, and it's a, it's an unparalleled of, uh, a level of capacity and efficiency. So compared to our, our, our biggest combine that we had before the X9, the S790, we're going to get uh, up to 45% more capacity in beans, up to 54% more capacity in high moisture corn, and up to 70% more capacity in tough threshing wheat. So, and we're going to do that while being 20% more efficient on a bushel or an acre basis. Okay. Well, um, speaking more efficient, what kind of uh what, what's the power plant you're running with this? Yeah, so we've got the new John Deere 13.6 liter engine in this. Uh, so it's a new uh, iteration of that, that size engine that we have at John Deere. And uh, that's one of the huge drivers that enables that efficiency in this machine. Okay, what kind of horsepower ratings are we looking at there? Yeah, so in, in our X9, we have two models, the 1000 and the 1100. We have the bigger of the two models behind us, and that's a, a peak horsepower of 690. 
Just a, just a little bit of horsepower. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you need the power. This this machine can go through 7,200 bushel of corn an hour, or 30 acres of beans or wheat. So we, we need the power to be able to feed that crop through the machine. And I see you're pushing the uh, what looks to be a 50 foot platform in front of it. So <laughs> yeah. So this is a new for 22 uh, head for us, a soybean head. It's called an, an HD 50F. So the HD is a new machine form that we've had starting this harvest where we've got the wings that'll go up and down to fall contours of the land. It's a 50 foot wide head, that's the 50, and the F means it's got a flexible cutter bar. So if you're if you're in some contours and you've got some low potting beans, we've got the best of both worlds. We've got the wings for the contours, the, the knife flex for the beans, and, and it's really gonna be a premier on ground cutting head for us. So uh, one question I've heard a lot whenever uh, this was unveiled was, are the, are, the, are the 7 Series Combines still going to be around or is this going no, to be No, absolutely. The 7 Series Combine has been a great combine for us. It's, it's rotary technology that we've had in the marketplace for over 20 years and the S Series we've had for about 10 years now. Okay. Um, that's going to be a core machine for us. This X9 machine is a great combine, super high capacity, uh, but that's not for every farm. 7,200 bushels of corn coming out of the machine every hour, you've got to have the logistics set up right. for that in trucks and drivers and grain carts and drying and storage. But not every operation can, can handle that with the acreage and the yield. Yeah. Um, so the S series is going to be a, a great machine for us for years to come. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate the information. Thanks man. so much. Thank you. Oh. Oh. So here's the new cat, huh? Oh, got a radio mount. Lots of space right here, actually. I don't know what you're going to put there, but there's a lot of space. So, cab on the X9 is very comfortable. I will say that. Very comfortable. Uh, pretty good visibility. I would maybe try to move one of these screens over here. Oh, so. And that's all I have to say about that. So while I was over at the John Deere booth, I was kind of checking out the vertical tillage tool and I uh, bumped into Steve Apple. So Steve, you're a, are you a product specialist for tillage then? Yeah, I am. Okay. So um, I cover, uh, I do tillage specialists for Missouri, Illinois, and Wisconsin. Okay, so as far as the vertical tillage tool, what's, uh, I guess, what's your guys' overall difference from, like, what, what do you guys do a little different here? I see it's a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> What, what else you got going on here? Yeah, so if you can see, we have a pretty heavy frame here. This is a 30-foot tool. Um, one of the big things we have in our tool um, is uh, 0 to 12 degrees for adjustment. Um, we have hydraulic adjustment with true set, so um, these adjustments can be made in the cab, on the go, in the field. Um, along with that, we have you know our fore-aft adjustment, uh, you know, side to side. We have a double basket system that uh, pressurizes up to 900 psi. Um, but a lot of premium features on this tool, uh, long, you know, a lot of sizes, so 25 foot is the smallest all the way up to 49. So just like any other VT, is this a high speed tool then? Yeah, so we actually recommend to run this around uh, 8 to 10 miles an hour uh, is, is the recommended range. That 8.5 to 9.5 is pretty popular. Um, and, and with those speeds and the, and the weight and how we set it, um, you don't see this tool want to, you know, roll at all. It, it holds in the ground firmly and does a really nice job. You don't get that washboard effect. Yeah, we don't you don't really see that very often with the just the way we set it and how much weight we have in the tool. Yeah, yeah I see it. I mean, it's a very heavy looking tool, and uh, I mean, it must be heavy enough. There's no yeah. weights added yeah. onto it, so is that kind of yeah. just because of the overall weight of the machine? Yeah, yeah, we don't put any weights on the tool. Uh, we do have wing pressure on the three sections, so um, that helps keep you know that that weight distributed to the wings as well. Uh, helps keep that you know uniform uh, ride in the field as far as not wanting to move in the frame. So. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate the appreciate the interview. Yeah, it's nice talking to you, Brian. So even though we bought a gleaner this t past time, we were very close to purchasing a Claw 7500 combine. Still a very, very good combine. Very nice. No. Okay, guys, I stopped by the Agco booth, and they have a gleaner S97 sitting here, pretty similar to ours. And uh, bumped into Aaron. I've talked to Aaron on the phone a few times uh, about our combine stuff. But Aaron, do you mind giving us just a brief walkthrough on how crop flows through this? Sure. You know, it's, it's very different than any other combine. Absolutely. And that, that difference is what it it's really makes the difference, really. You right. know, 
because instead of having an axial machine that you would see on, on a lot of the competitive products, we have that transverse rotary, the, the natural flow processor. And really the first thing, it starts at the beginning at the feeder house, and really, you guys have seen in Brian's videos that it's a narrower feeder house than what you would have on an axial flow, and that's, that's the reason for that. And there's a really big reason for that is that we're feeding it differently. So 39 inches from the front, 39 inches into the rotor. Yeah. That competitive product, you got a big feeder there, right? Yeah, and there's usually a cone that's getting forced into it. Right. Right. Two things, you're using power, you're using fuel, you're also you're bumping around with the grain, really. You're kind of damaging that grain, and it's also going to take a nice right angle turn after it gets in there. So instead of that, we're going to feed the side of the rotor 39 inches all the way, all the way through. And then we go through our, our rotor here, and it goes transverse again, so we're feeding the side, goes around. And we've got 360 degrees of separation. We're on the axial machines. So you're only using probably about 180, only half of that rotor that 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 really spin. Okay. So that's why we're able to run that shorter rotor, more spin, yep. more separation. And we're again we're gentle on that crop. The goal of here is is efficiency and performance. And a lot of guys think performance, they think how fast you're going through the field. We we get a good speed, but the other performance you gotta think about is in that grain tank. Your product that you're selling, you want a best bin sample in the industry. Because we have the rotary design, a lot more gentle on the crop, a yep. lot easier on it, and we get a great bin sample. I know from our personal experience, we've only ran wheat with ours so far, yeah. and uh, people are asking what settings, and to be honest, I don't have enough experience to you know, think that I'm an operator. Right now, I'm just a guy sitting in the seat. Right. I'm not making any fine adjustments in the back, and really, for just going off factory settings, maybe adjusting my sieves, our right. sample was extremely clean. I and mean, that's that's the beauty of, of really, uh, it's a tried and true method. We, yeah. We've had many, many machines before this generation after generation that have learned how to operate the transverse design. And you can really depend on those settings in the, in, in the manual or in the terminal too. You yeah. can see those terminal settings. One of the main questions I get is why is the feeder house offset? And that's because you're dumping it at the front of that transverse rotor, correct? Exactly. And see, so the width of the trans, it's offset to where it's inletting on the front part of that rotor. And it's the front part of that concave. So it's 39 inches across the concave and then it goes right into that separation process yep. after that. So if you, we would fit it in the center, we would be fitting, feeding the center of that rotor and it just wouldn't work right. Yeah. So we got to offset it. Plenty of header manufacturers, of course, we'd love you for you to use our, our leaner heads, our 9300s and our, our 3300 command corn heads. But even like you guys know, yep. we've got we got aftermarket headers that are able to fit onto that. Macdon's really pretty good. Yep. You guys are using a Capella head, having yep. pretty good luck with it as well. Yep. yep. So it's it's really the offset isn't a really big hurdle because there's a lot of guys understand that there's going to be leaner machines to it, so you're able to put that machine on it. Yep. So yeah. So on our machines here now, of course, we're we're in North America. I know a lot of guys are asking about yep. where we can get our leaner combines. We're in North America and Canada. Um, a lot of guys, where a lot of dealers are moving into that leaner processor. The other really great kind of place that really kind of somewhat exotic is Australia. Okay. Uh, I actually went down to Melbourne a couple times, talked to a lot of great dealers down there in Australia, and it's it's a blast. Uh, it's it's a great country, and they really love their gleaners down there. Yep. And then the other place that's really kind of cool is China. They love uh, they love the transverse because they do rice in the in, in China. Oh, okay. And they like the lighter combine that's able to carry on the on the softer ground that they plant right, rice yeah. into. Yeah, so I guess I never thought about a rice application. Yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. yeah. It's really it's really a great combine. Really all around a great all around crop for, yep. for combines. So yeah. All right, well, I appreciate you talking to us, too. Brian, and, uh, I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah. I enjoy your videos. I oh, really oh, thank do. you, man. Yeah. No yeah. problem. Thanks. I'll keep them too. All right. All right. Hey, everybody, we stopped by the horse booth. I know a lot of you have seen me wearing a horse hat. I've been speculating. Well, here is a horse avatar. This is an air seater. And I bumped into Jeremy Hughes. I've seen Jeremy talking about the... Uh, Talking about the Avatar in a few other videos and stuff, so mm -hmm. I figured you were the guy to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll give you kind of a quick overview here of the uh, Avatar 60M. Uh, many of you may have seen the Avatar uh, SD40 uh, that was launched here a couple of years ago. We've had a lot of those uh, drills going out into uh, the corn belt here. A lot of customers using them for soybeans, small grains, and also in cover crops. But this year here at Farm Progress 2021, we're launching a new 60-foot version uh, of that Avatar technology. So this would technically be today um, the world's largest central fill single disc drill that's available in, in production. So when we 
we talk about the, the capacity of the machine, 60 foot working width on the toolbar, 10 inch spacing on the openers. And if you take a look here at the tank, we have a three tank design. Now each one of these tanks is independently mounted. So each one of them has its own scale system. And starting with the 55 bushel tank up front and to the two back here in the back at 150 a piece, this is, has a total carrying capacity of 355 bushels. So being able to divide that up in three compartments and like I say, an independent scale system on each one of the tanks. Another unique feature about the Avatar 60M is it's full, uh, full ISO bus implement control. So for example, if you're running a, a deer tractor, you're running a new Fent tractor, Case, New Holland, whatever, and you've got an ISO VT, you can plug and play and do all of your implement control right through that monitor that you've already got into the cab. Um, one of the things that we have talked a lot to customers about here and had a lot of questions about at Farm Progress 21 has been the three tanks that are on the machine. Like I said earlier, uh, customers that have been using the Avatar SD40 today have been using it a lot for soybeans, using it for small grains, and also using it for cover crops. And the whole cover crop question has been a big topic here this year at Farm Progress 21 as we're starting to see a lot of difficulty that producers are having in metering and actually applying what we would call these cover crop cocktails. So for example, if you had uh, radishes, you had winter peas, and you had rye all mixed together, you can get settling out of seed, which leads to inconsistent uh, application in the field, and also very difficult, very much difficult to uh, meter and also maintain a calibration. One of the beauties to having multiple tanks is in those cover crop applications is you're able to divide that up. So for example, here like on the 60M, we can put radishes in one tank, we can put peas in another, we can put the rye in another, do independent calibrations, do independent applications, putting all that in the same furrow and having a lot more uniform and consistent job in the field. For the soybean guys, this is an absolute phenomenal when it comes to the capacity that the machine has. And then if you're wanting to put down any dry fertilizer in the soybeans, you've got that capacity there as well. And the same also for small grains, being able to do in furrow place to start a fertilizer, uh, granular fertilizer. So when he's saying 365 bushel capacity, I mean, that's basically 365, that's 370 yeah. <laughs> acres of, of soybeans to plant. So yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. It's, uh, it's a lot better than filling up every 60 acres. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, if you're doing soybeans and you've already got them inoculated and ready to go, fill her up and let the hammer down. Yep. With this big tank here, mm -hmm. Uh, and we have these big tires here. Is there a weight transfer system going on here? Absolutely. So the chassis that you see here has got a lot of the similar characteristics of what our Maestro planner has. So for example, we use these large uh, 520 tires here that's got a very low PSI, low inflationary PSI, so they've already got a light footprint in the field. But whenever we unfold the toolbar of the Avatar 60M, we, when we put that into working position, that cart actually lifts up a little bit with that weight transfer, basically eliminating that wheel track in the field creating a lot more uniform stand of your crop that you got behind it. The other thing that that weight transfer system does as well is it gives you the ability to create a lot more stability in your opener engagement because today one of the things that we see on some single disc drills is, is needing to add a lot of weight to the frames, especially if you're in hard ground to get those openers to engage. Whereas on ours, we use the weight transfer system and we have the rock shaft back here that we'll show you in a little bit for maintaining your openers in the soil at proper depth. So, just to give you kind of a sneak peek back here in the back on the uh, openers that we use on the Avatar uh, 60M, same openers that we're using on the Avatar SD40. These openers have got the ability to apply up to 550 pounds of downforce, you know, to get into those hard conditions that you may be seeding into, especially in fall conditions. But a couple of things I wanted to point out here real quick on the Avatar is the actual torsion system that we use here in order to keep the row units engaged. So if you see the cylinder here that we have, each one of these uh, openers is mounted to a rock shaft that's mounted to that cylinder. And when we need more downforce, we have a setting in the cab on the monitor where we, we extend that cylinder that twists that rock shaft that creates more downforce on the opener. Now with this rubber torsion, we have a quick recoil, like if we go over any stones or anything like that. But the other advantage to this is, when it comes to looking at some of the competitive machines where we have pins and bushings and grease points and service points, a lot of maintenance and a lot of time involved, we virtually eliminated all of those points with this design, meaning there's no pins, no bushings to replace ever on the linkages here on the uh, on the how the opener mounts to the rock shaft. And the only wear points that you have on the on the unit would be your bearing, your blade, and also your boots. It's pretty pretty simple, pretty uh, mm -hmm. pretty low maintenance. I like that. The other thing about it too is, is that we've got it sitting here on the ground, but if you need to make any type of adjustments on the back, you know, as far as your depth, as far as like your down pressure and your gauge wheel on your uh, press wheels, 
you can just lift it up to about waist height, and everything can be done from a standing position in the back as far as all of your adjustments okay. go. And one other unique feature about the Avatar that I, I want to talk about here just real quick, uh, the single row design that we have here uh, is based upon a 10 inch spacing. And with the Avatar SD40 and also the Avatar 60M, one of the reasons why that we went to this single row design is, is now that we've got a 10 inch spacing, we also now have the ability to run row crop cultivators behind this as well for doing cultivation like in 10 inch wheat, 10 inch beans, and other crops like that. So I was walking by the uh, walking by the Gleaner Combine again, just uh, making my rounds, and someone said, "Hey, stop, stop!" And then, um, and then uh, they told me they were giving me this sign. So <laughs> yeah, well, we appreciate Brian what you guys are doing. We really appreciate how much you enjoy your machine. Yeah, well, and well. that's the big thing that we're trying to do at Agco is that customer experience, making sure people have a great harvest experience when they're doing that, and enjoying the products that they're they're enjoying, you know, yeah. and at their home. So I wanted to make sure in your home you could enjoy that product too. <laughs> yeah, so sure. I wanted to make sure. That you could take one of these signs with oh, you. Oh man, that thing's heavy. That's it is heavy. heavy. Hey, it's sturdy built, man. Yeah, yeah. Heavy cleaner. yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's solid steel. Huh? <laughs> hey, is this AR 500 point? I think so. You can okay. probably shoot into okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. This well, is not awesome. a problem, man. I appreciate great it again. Yeah. So good. Thank you. You know, because it was already droughted. Yeah. Well, then after that, then we got 2.7 inches in August at one time, and it just. Well, folks, we're farm showed out. We're going to head back to the camper, pack up, and we're going home. <laughs> <laughs>